13 year old Kylie Cody was a happy go lucky kid who liked reading science fiction, drawing, and experiment experimenting in school science lab. We call his teacher and classmates. I never saw him in a bad mood, and he would share his gum with everyone, said a fellow eighth grader student. But the, bo the Boy Scout, described as his teacher as very creative and a problem solver, won't be going to high school with his classmates this fall. Kylan died in a car accident, in a car crash, on Sunday afternoon, January 10th, after his 18-year-old brother, Corey, fell asleep at the wheel. The, brother, the brother's car crossed the center lane and slammed headlong into an upcoming pickup truck, killing Kylan and leaving his brother and two other people seriously injured. Kylan is one of at least 105,000 Americans who will die this year in drowsy driving crashes. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, more than 40,000 people will be injured. Sleep and deprivation doesn't only make your head dance in class, but it can also be dangerous to your life. Similar to drunken driving, um, sleep deprivation can cause at least a thousand highway car crashes each year. Today, I'd like you guys to leave this room with the knowledge of how important sleeping is. As a college student and a full-time worker, I lack a lot of sleep, <laughs> and one of my mottos was, I'll catch on, I'll, 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 I'll catch on my sleep while, when I'm old. But after f falling asleep several times, not only in class, but in public places, I decided to do a research on how important sleeping is. I'm pretty sure I am not the only person in this room who has the same problem. We are all here, college students, workers, and some of us, or some of you guys, are parents. So uh, balancing all of this stuff and finding time to sleep can be very difficult, but it's necessary. Today I will discuss the importance of sleep and dangers it can cause, and if we don't get enough of it. Indeed, during the past decade, researchers have found more and more evidence about negative impact of not getting enough sleep. Now thought to be six and a half to eight hours per night for average adults, and nine hours for teenagers. Sleep deprivation greatly increases the risk of obesity, illness such as cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. Makes it harder to learn physical skills, remember facts, and control one's emotions. And may even raise one's risk of develop developing mental illness like depression or post-traumatic stress disorder. For car accidents, people who work long hours and young people, especially young men, are most likely to cause drowsy driving accidents. 78% of drivers in drowsy driving accidents are men, and 55% of younger, 50, and 25 or younger. People who work 60 hours a week or longer are four times more likely to fall asleep while driving. Police response to around 1,000 drowsy driving crashes annually, but the actual number of accidents related to sleep deprivation may be higher, since police departments are less well acquainted with drowsiness driving. Um, it can also give you heart problems. If you don't sleep, you lose 12 hours. If you even lose 12 hours of multiple days, you undergo the same changes in your heart function and your, your blood pressure um, as someone who has a heart disease, said Robert C. Bassner, director of Columbia University, cardiopulmonary sleep. Um, sleep loss also can trigger ob obesity because if you don't get the proper amount of sleep, your hunger hormones increase and drive overeating, said Bassner. Diabetes can develop due to loss, to loss of sleep, he said. Mental illness is an evidence Evidence is mounting that sleep disorders may be playing a bigger role in mental illness than previously was thought. Some evidence also suggests that sleep problems may actually be a per per persecutor of disorders ranging from attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, or psychophrenia. Sleep improves uh, performance on tasks ranging from physical skills to complex judgments and emotional control. The concept is so well established by data the scientists consider mundane, although the public isn't widely aware of it, says the University of Pennsylvania. When your body is sleep deficient, it goes into a state of stress. The, the body functions are put on higher alert, which causes an increase in blood pressure and produces stress hormones. Higher blood pressure increases your risk of heart attacks and strokes. The stress hormones are also unfortunately make it hard for you to sleep. 
Researchers do not fully understand why we sleep and dream. The process called memory consolidation occurs during sleep. While your body may be resting, your brain is busy preceding your day, making connections between events, sensory input feelings, and memories. Your dreams and deep sleep are important time for your brain to make memories links. Getting more quality will help you remember and perceive things better. Uh, there's a few tips for us, of, uh, for all of us who don't know how to sleep better. Mm -hmm. um, do not exercise before going to bed. For the most part, it's brain tiredness, not body tiredness, that signals your body to sleep. Um, if you're suffering from insomnia, do not nap. You won't be able to fall asleep through night when it's, when it's the time that you're supposed to be sleeping. Um, when, you, when you need to st stay up late, don't drink any energy drinks because when it's time for you to go to sleep, you're not going to be able to. That's going to cause insomnia later on. Um, do not use your bed for anything other than sleeping and sex. <laughs> your bed shouldn't be used for reading, watching, or eating TV because it connects with your body and when you're in bed, you feel like going to the computer or checking your phone because your body's getting used to it. Um, today I talked on how dangerous not sleeping is. It causes accidents and mental and physical illness and it, it shows and it's, it shows how necessary for our body is unhealthy to have at least six and a half hours of sleep. Um, please don't treat sleeping as a luxury, but as a necessity. I hope I was able, able to help you with some of the tips and information about sleeping. So Lisa, what did you think? I thought it was uh, very good. Uh, she had a lot of information into it. Um, the only thing I really have to say was that I felt that she was reading to us for most of the speech because her head was down. She'd only look up every so often. Up until the very end when she started giving us tips, then she was looking at us more. But that's about it. Okay, well, on the delivery issues, that's pretty much exactly what I was going to say about uh, the way the speech is delivered. There's way too much reading that's going on, um, and uh, it's not until you get to the tips that you actually look up and start talking to us. Most of the time, you're looking down and, and reading. Uh, there are a couple of places where it seems like you are going over this. Uh, it's The material is just not familiar to you. You're having to read it. and. Uh, I, you know, we're not emphasizing the delivery things right now, but there are a couple of little issues that I will, will mention. For instance, the pronunciation issue on one term. Uh, there were a couple of other ones. I thought you corrected one. You started to say, you know, balance, uh, balance, you know, but you corrected yourself. I, I could see it actually happening in front of me. Uh, this is the first time I've heard uh, moto. You know, my personal motto is, as opposed to motto, you know, so that was a little odd. And the other one was, um, the, I think the word that you were looking for is not uh, per cursor, it's precursor. You know, you know uh, there's a different, you know, a precursor is something that occurs before, the precursor is somebody who's after you. <laughs> You know, that sort of thing. And I think you just got the wrong phrasing there. Like I said, minor quibbles on that. Uh, I think that uh, there was a little bit of an organizational issue in the middle of the speech because you introduce some uh, potential harms, and then you talk about the accident issue with cars, and then you come back and provide us with the supporting material that talks about those harms, heart attacks and diabetes, and or not di is it diabetes, um, obesity and some other things and it seemed like your support material was completely separate from the earlier material that, and then you stuck in the accident stuff in the middle and I didn't understand why those two things weren't together in the first place. I thought the attention device was very effective. It would be much more effective if you were talking to us and just telling us the story instead of having to read it. I think that it's a good illustration that t shows us 
gives us a justification of listening to uh, your particular point. Some of the visual images were fine. Uh, they are amusing and interesting. They don't explain much about the subject. I thought, for instance, you had this one section where you're talking about memory consolidation, and I thought there's got to be some explanation about how that process works. This is a, a, a theory that could probably use a visual model to explain it, and that would have been a natural thing to have in the speech at that particular section. Otherwise, all of the visuals are really just kind of like uh, transition things or uh, to create some interest in the speech, which they do okay at doing, but they don't add much to the content. All right. Thank you.